Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day to you. Um, let's get ready for the word. We're going to talk about the resurrection is a blessing. We're going to talk about the resurrection is a blessing. Before we do that, let me pray. Father, I pray, Father God, that today you will think through my mind that you will speak through my vocal cord. I ask, Father God, that it be less of me and more of you. I pray, Father God, that it be none of me and all of you. I give you liberty and freedom to have your way in me today. And I declare that your word will go forth uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And I declare that we will get double for any trouble. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stretch your hands toward the Bible. Say, this is the Bible. It is the word of God. It is the word of faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My life is better after having heard the word of faith. My ears are open to hear. My heart is ready to receive. My life is ready to manifest the living word of the living God. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Now, if you would stretch your hands toward me, say, Father, place your anointing on Pastor Henry. Give him a word in due season that will give my life new reason. I declare now <clears throat> that your word will go forth uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Now, um, <clears throat> let me get started. So once again, the, res the resurrection is a blessing. So I want to get started here in the book of Genesis 3. Stick with me as we go through the word because I like to take it from the beginning to the end and like to let the word tell a story. So let's get ready for the story today. The resurrection is a blessing. Genesis 3, verse 13. I mean, uh, verse 13. Genesis 3, 13. Now, <clears throat> now this is right after Adam and Eve had um, eaten of the tree of the garden, which God told them they should not eat. And so, you know, God came and asked Adam, what is this thou hast done? And Adam replied, we see the Lord said, unto, uh, Adam replied that um, it's the woman you gave to be with me. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. She said, The serpent beguiled me, or the serpent tricked me, or the serpent bamboozled me. He tricked me, and I did eat. Now, or I did disobey, or I did partake of what you said that I should not partake of. And that's exactly what the enemy comes to do. He comes to trick us. He comes to beguile us. He comes to bamboozle us and fool us and try and get us to do what God said that we shouldn't do. So we need to be ready for that, glory to God, for the word of God. And the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle and above every beast of the field. And upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now, he said, thou art cursed. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed. Above anything, you are cursed. The devil is cursed. You just say that right where you are. Say, the devil has been cursed. Oh, yes, verse 15. And I will put, no, 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 no. Let me tell you something. Misery loves company. Misery loves company, so the devil's cursed, so he wants us to be cursed. Now, let's put that in mind. Let's go forward. And I will put in enmity or an enemy between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and you shall bruise his heel. Now, he shall bruise thy head. We're going to come back to that. Keep going. And the woman said, I will break, and he said unto the woman, God said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow uh, and in thy concep and conception, and a sorrow shall I bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. He shall rule over thee. Verse 17. And Adam said, Because thou hast 
And, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened <clears throat> to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee thou should not eat, cursed is the ground for thy sake. Cursed is the ground, everything around you shall be cursed. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and of sorrow shall I eat of it all the days of thy life. That's how the curse got born into the earth. Go well, how? Through disobedience to the will of God, through disobedience to the things of God. The enemy came in with, de with deception. He tricked the, the woman. The woman got the man to join her in, 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 in disobedience, and now the cursing has been released. And this is why it's so important to obey things of God. Were you living under grace or were you living under the Old Testament? Because why it brings it doesn't God not putting a curse on you, but we can get involved in that curse when we didn't live in a life of disobedience to the things of God. Well, somebody said, Well, I'm not cursed. No, but it sure seems like it when nothing's working. Why is that? Because God disobedience to the things that God said, God knows the way. Let me keep going. So now, let's go back to verse 15. It says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, or an enemy. Now watch this. An enemy between thee and the woman. An enemy between thee and the woman. Now listen to this. And it shall bruise thy head. The enemy, he called it an it. The enemy that's going to, he called it it. It's going to bruise that head. What do you mean? It's going to stop that, 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 that power. It's going to stop your authority. That's what your, the, the devil's head is. That's his authority. That's his power. And he says, uh, and anything he can influence. And thou shalt bruise his heel or his flesh, glory to God. So I'm going to cause an enemy that's going to come to the woman, and it's going to be an enemy, and he's calling it a hit that's going to mess up your authority, even though you're going to harm his flesh. Somebody said Resurrection Sunday. Glory to God. Now, let's go forward. No. So what happened? This is why Jesus had to come through a woman, because he said, "It, I'm going to put an enemy between you and the woman." Uh, it's going to come from the woman. That's why Jesus had to be born of a woman. He had to be born of a virgin woman. And he came into the earth from a virgin woman. And he came in with an it. What kind of it did he come in with? He came in with the power of God. He came in with the anointing of God. He came in with the ability of God. That's what he came in. And that is the it that stops up the devil's power. That is the it that short circuits the devil's authority. Even though he bruised his heel, that's why he had to get on the cross. His flesh had to get bruised so that blood could get into the earth. That's why he had to get on the cross. Why? Because he had to release the blood of Jesus. Or the blood. That was blood type G. That was God's blood that got in the earth. That was God's blood. Now, let's fast forward. Let me go to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Somebody at home say this. Say all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Glory to God. My iniquities have been forgiven, and my diseases has been healed. Glory to God. Or my diseases. He has come to heal your diseases. Glory to God. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction and crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed as the evil. Glory to God. So now, he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my thoughts, O my mind, and forget not all his benefits. All his benefits. Let me tell you something. 
Jesus came with some benefits. Yes, he healed the diseases. Yes, he redeemed our life from destruction. Yes, he crowned us with love and kindness. Yes, he filled our mouths with good things. So our youth is new like the eagle. And yes, he came with the benefit of the power of God. He came with the benefit of the anointing of God. He came with the benefit of the ability of God. That's what he came with. That's a benefit, glory to God. When he resurrected, Glory to God. He rose up and said, All authority on heaven and earth has been given unto me. All power has been given unto me. All the benefits has been given unto me. Go ye therefore. What is that? I've been given the authority. I'm giving you the authority. Go with the authority in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Go forward. Romans 10. Romans chapter 10. Uh, for Christ is the end of the law. You know, we had to have laws. In order to get sin off of us, we had to obey the laws. For Christ, or the, the authority of God, there's another way, is the end of the law. For righteousness to everyone that believeth. You need to believe in this now. You got to believe in the power of God. You got to believe in the anointing of God. You got to believe in the ability of God that can get on you. For Moses described it the righteousness which is of the law. That the man which doeth these things shall live by them. I'm not trying to live by the law, and you should not be trying to live by the law, because you cannot live by the law. There's those 613 laws, and you can't live by them because you don't even know all of them. And if you miss one of them, you miss them all. Verse 6. But the righteousness which is of faith, glory to God, speaketh on the wise. The righteousness, which is of what? Faith. Somebody say faith. Which is of faith. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into the heavens? That is to bring Christ from above. Who shall ascend into the deep? That is to bring Christ again from the dead. Glory to God. What are you talking about? The resurrection. Bring Christ again from the dead. But what said it then? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, or the authority of Jesus, or the ability of Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart, that God has raised him from the dead. Somebody say resurrection power. That God has raised him from the dead. Say it again. Resurrection power. Thou shalt be saved. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you, Lord, that I am saved. Thank you, Father. Verse 10. For with man, uh, uh, for with the heart of man, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. How do you become righteous? With your what? Heart. Not by obeying rules, but you become righteous with your heart. Not by wearing a long dress or taking off makeup, but with your heart you believe unto righteousness. Because wearing makeup is not going to get cut. It. Wearing a long dress is not going to cut it. Taking off your jewelry is not going to cut it. With your heart, you believe unto righteousness, or with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Glory to God. Now, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the authority of God shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the ability and the anointing and the authority of God shall be saved. But you can't call upon his anointing until you are saved, until you believe in your heart, until you confess with your mouth. Because of the resurrection of Christ, you've now got the ability to receive your salvation and to receive your anointing that God has brought you because the resurrection power is a blessing or an empowerment or an ability to operate in the things of God. Glory to God. I feel the anointing on that. I feel the anointing on that. Thank you, Father God, for sending your son. Thank you, Father, 
Go to Isaiah verse 9. I'm in chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Yes, the government, or like I taught in times past, it is meant for us to govern ourselves. It's on him, glory to God. It's on him. I'm going to govern myself by what he did. He operated in the power of God. I'm going to operate in the power of God. He overcame sin. I'm going to overcome sin. He overcame sickness. I'm going to overcome sickness. He overcame death. I'm going to overcome death or but separation from the things of God by the power of God through the resurrection of the Son of God. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be wonderful. Or his power shall be wonderful. Counselor. Glory to God. I've been counseled by the anointing of God. Counseled by the Son of God. Counseled by governing myself according to the things of God. The mighty God. The everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 7. And of the increase of his government and peace... There should be no end. The anointing is here today for us and forevermore while we're here on this earth. For the government, and I mean for the increase of his government and peace, there should be no end upon the throne of David and upon the kingdom of uh, uh, to order it and to establish it with the judgment and with justice from henceforth or from now on, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Glory to God. People of God, I want you to know the resurrection of Jesus is here. So the anointing, yes, so you can be saved. Yes, for the forgiveness of our sins. That's why blood got shed into the earth. For the forgiveness of our sins. So that we don't have to be a slave to sin. But that we can believe in the righteousness and be righteous uh, of God. Glory to God. But also that we can be empowered by the things of God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians. Now listen to this. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. So stop trying to live by the laws. You're not eating this. Why is that? This is against the laws. He said in the book of Leviticus. Oh, you're not supposed to do that. This is against the laws. He said in the book of Leviticus. No, uh, uh, you need to do whatever the Spirit would have you to do because he's come to counsel you. He's come to stand by you. He's come to, to teach you and to guide you and to strengthen you and to help you. But that no man is justified by the law of the sight of God. Verse 11, verse 11 Genesis, uh, Galatians 3. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Christ has redeemed us, or paid the price. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. He called the law curse. Why is that? Because it kept you tied to the curse, because you couldn't keep the law, all 1,600, I mean all 613 of them, or whatever it may be, more than that. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Glory to God. Jesus became a curse for us on the cross. Jesus took our sins on the cross. Jesus took our pain on the cross. Jesus took our shortcomings and all our bad mess on the cross. Because cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promises of the Spirit through faith. Let me make sure you get this. The blessing of Abraham 
my call on me and you and us and all of us through Jesus Christ or through the word about this power because Jesus is the word and Christ is the power, glory to God, that he might receive the power of the spirit. Let me say that again. The power of the spirit. Let me say something again. The spirit has power. The spirit has power that we might receive the power of the spirit of God. How? Through faith. Galatians 3.14. Glory to God. Mm, mm, mm. Enemy didn't want me to preach this word. I see why now. If you're paying attention, this sort of this sort of be blessing your socks off. If you're not, you need to go back to the beginning and start over again. Pay attention. Ephesians 1. And whom we have the redemption through the blood. But the price has been paid how? By the blood. <laughs> For the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace or according to an abundance of his favor. <laughs> he did us a favor, glory to God, when he hung on the cross. He did us a favor when he shed his blood. He did us a favor when he went down. He did us a favor when he got up, glory to God. So we can, Father God, so we can be resurrected. He got resurrected. So you can be resurrected out of a life of sin. Resurrected out of a life of poverty. Resurrected out of a life of disobedience. Resurrected out of a life of sickness. Resurrected out of bad relationship. Resurrected. It's resurrection time at home. Home. Come on, start with me. It's resurrection time. Say it at home. Oh, it's a God. It's resurrection time. It's resurrection time. The resurrection is a blessing. He resurrected so we could be blessed. When we resurrect from sin, we're being blessed. When we resurrect from sickness, it is a blessing. We resurrect from poverty, it is a blessing. I've been resurrected. I've been resurrected. There was a time I was stuck in sin, but I've been resurrected, glory to God. There was a time I was stuck in poverty, but I've been resurrected, thanks to God. There was a time I was stuck in drugs and alcohol, but I've been resurrected, glory to God. There was a time I've been stuck in an uh, uh, illicit sexual activity, but I've been resurrected by the power of God, and that's my blessing. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Three more scriptures I'm doing. Ephesians 9. Watch this. The fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. The fruit of the Spirit. Somebody say that with me. Say the fruit of the Spirit right at home. Come on. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, temperance, patience, long-suffering, gentleness. Why is that? That's the fruit the Spirit will produce. But let me tell you something, people of God, there is another fruit that the Spirit will produce, and it's called the anointing of God, or the power of God, or the ability of God. And if you don't believe it, you can't receive it. But if you believe it, you'll receive it in Jesus' name. Because you'll do whatever it takes to make sure you get it. Mm -mm -mm. I know why the enemy trying to stop this word. Go forward, Romans 8. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, and he does, let me say it again. But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. He's going to quicken your body. He's going to make you alive. He's going to raise up on you. And when he raises up on you, you will raise up in the anointing of God. And you will do things that you could not do before because the anointing of God is on you. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody at home say hallelujah for the word of God. Hallelujah for the power of God. Hallelujah because of the things of God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me bring this thing to a close. 
Let me bring this thing to a close. Revelation 12, this is my last verse. Revelation 12, verse 11. And they overcame him, him who Satan. They overcame him, Satan. They overcame him who sin. They overcame him who iniquity, trespass, sickness, disease. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And it's time for you to start testifying. I've been redeemed. It's time for you to start testifying. I'm resurrected. I don't care what you what's going what you going through. It's time for you to come to that come. He uh, 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 he satisfied mouth with good things. So all you do is you new like the eagle. It's time to put some good things in your mouth. Glory to God. So they overcame him by the word of their testimony. It's time to start testifying about the resurrection. He was resurrected, so I can resurrect. He was made alive, so I can be made alive. He has authority, so I can receive authority. His resurrection is my blessing. My resurrection is my blessing. I'm just blessed. Because the enemy wants you to be cursed like he is, because he can't resurrect from where he is, but we resurrected to where we are. And they loved not their lives to death. They didn't love their old selves to separate you from the things of God. Because people of God, Jesus did not just die so that you can be saved and go to heaven. Jesus died so you can be saved and go to heaven. He died so you can be saved and know for operate the authority and the ability and the power that God has ordained that you should walk in. Because we're heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. He's an heir to the authority. He said, all authority on heaven and earth has been given unto me. We might not have the authority in heaven, but we sure have got authority on earth. He said, if I go into your, all the world and, and teach, I maybe can't go into all the world, but I can show going to all of my world. I can start teaching my world how to obey God over here, how to operate in God, things of God over there, how to do all the things of God. Glory to God, because I'm anointed and I'm appointed to teach and preach. And you are anointed and you're appointed to do whatever it is God has anointed you to do. Hallelujah. So thank you, Lord, for the resurrection. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we can study the word. Thank you, Father God, that we can rightly divide the word. Thank you, Lord God, that we can rightly apply the word in our lives. People of God, I pray you got something out of that word. If you didn't get anything out of that word, you better go back and listen to it again. I don't care if you've been saved 10 minutes or 10 years, 20 minutes or 20 years. It's time to resurrect into the power of God. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Now, Father, I pray for these, your sheep, your precious sheep, your precious people. I pray for the God that will operate, that believe and they'll receive do because of the resurrection and the power of Jesus, I believe they'll receive the anointing of God. They'll be, they, they, the anointing will get on them, and it's like a, ooh, it's like a fresh, it's like a, it's a, it's a high, Lord God. It's a divine high that only the Spirit of God can put on you when you know you're doing things in the Spirit that you could not do in the natural. I pray, Father God, for everyone under the sound of my voice to receive, to believe, and receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Now, let's stay right where you are so we can go ahead and have this communion and we can also give and sow into this word. Praise God. Also, I hope you've got some type of communion elements. I don't know what you might have, a little juice around the house. A little, whatever you have around the house, get a little bit of that as well as um, a little cracker a little piece of bread, whatever you have, that we can take this communion with. And um, he said, as often as you do this, glory to God. We well, you know this resurrection this Sunday, we're gonna do it today. So uh, let's go ahead and take, have access to the bread because this bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we know that his body was wounded. The Bible says he was wounded by our transgressions he was bruised for our guilt and our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
And with his stripes, we are healed and made whole. I want you to know we're not just healed in our physical body, but we're healed in our relationship with God. We're healed in our emotional states. We're healed in our mental state. We are healed in our ability to operate in the power of God. Because God ordained us right from the beginning to operate in the power of God. But Jesus said, let's make man in our image and our likeness. Let him have dominion or let him have authority or let him have power. Let him have ability. Glory to God. And so now, because of the resurrection, we have that dominion, that authority, and our power, and our ability. Let's remember that. Let's tap into it as we eat it. Take of the bread. You may partake. Now we may take access to the uh, liquid representing the blood of Jesus. It was only by the blood of Jesus that we have forgiveness of sin. All it took was one drop of that blood. So it's the blood of Jesus that gave us forgiveness of sin. And through the forgiveness of sin, we are made right with God. Right with God. We are made righteous. The righteousness of God. And because now that we are the brightness of God, now we have the ability to operate in the power of God. Because that's a blood bought right. So with that in mind, you may drink. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Glory to God. So I want to give you an opportunity to do things, two things. One, receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Two, to sow into this word. Is so into this uh, ministry. Don't shut off this thing now because it's not over until it's over. First of all, let those who've never seen Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior go and receive Him. So let's see. If you've never had Jesus to be your Lord, it's time. There's no time to waste. Let's get it done. Repeat this after me. Say, Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to die for my sins, to make me right again and by standing with you. Thank you, Father God, that because I'm in right standing with you, your power and your ability, is I, I have access to it in my life from this point forward. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you for saving me this day. Praise God. Glory to God. Now, I want to give you the opportunity to, to sell. We have three ways you can do that. You can give by our cash app. Our cash app is the dollar sign, capital W, capital F, capital C, capital M, or excuse me, capital W, capital F, capital C, then ministries with a capital M. One more time. Dollar sign, capital W, capital F, capital C, ministries, with a capital M. Or you can uh, call us and give at the number 770-477-8586. Once again, that number is 770-477-8586. Or you can write us a check. We'll always receive a check. And you can mail that to WFCM uh, P.O. Box 33, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30237. One more time. Make that check payable and, and mail it out to WFCM at P.O. Box 33, Mount Zion, I'm excuse me, P.O. Box 33, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30237. People, God, I love you. I thank God for you. Once again, happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day. You have a blessed one.